So in this video we're going to learn about internal loadings. And internal loadings are the forces and moments that are created actually inside these metal members and beams that we've been talking about. And this is really important because if you have forces that are too big inside the metal of these these trusses and all this, that could break your steel or it could break your aluminum or whatever material you're using. So this is a topic that we really dive deeper into in a mechanics of materials class, but here we're going to introduce the idea of what internal loadings are and how to calculate them. So let's say that we have this beam and it's loaded with a moment, a distributed loading, and some force over there on the right. Let's say that we did this. For my free body diagram, let's say let's say that I chose to do it on this right here and that's kinda of weird because I kind of section off that right part well again free bodies are cool because you can do them on you can analyze whatever thing that you want and you can see what forces are acting on it so it's just in this case I'm choosing to analyze this thing. So of course I have to go through the questions what is touching this object? Those are the forces. Well really it's just going to be this force here and the force of gravity on this beam and a lot of times we neglect the force of gravity. So it's really just this force. But we know if this force is the only thing that's happening, this force is going to cause this object to move. Well, don't forget that this left part of the beam is touching this right hand part that we're doing the FBD on. So therefore it must put some forces on our object. If you think about adding up the forces in the Y direction, that means for there to be balance, we actually have to have some force going up like this. This is known as the shear force. And it's given the letter V. And again, this comes from the atoms of metal on this side pulling up on the atoms of metal on the right side. If this left part didn't create this shear force going up, our object would be going down. Well in the same way as we can see here, this force right here brings with it a component pushing to the right. Well therefore, this part of the beam must be pulling to the left here. This is known as the normal force and it's given the symbol N. Now, let's just say we sum the moments about this point right here. The moment of the shear, zero. The moment of the normal force, zero. Well, the moment of this force about that point won't be zero. And that force, by the looks of it, will want to rotate this section clockwise. Well, of course, in reality, we know that this beam just sitting there is not moving at all. So this is where our last internal, this is where our last type of internal loading comes in. Our left hand side of the beam will create a couple moment to battle out the moment that this force puts about that yellow point. And this internal moment is called the bending moment. So these three things, normal force, shear force, and bending moment, these are internal loadings. These are the three types of internal forces. And again, these forces are created by the atoms of this other part pushing and pulling and tugging and sort of resisting 
on our free body diagram so that it doesn't move, so it remains in static equilibrium. So, that's what internal forces are. And there's three types. A shear force, which can act either up or down. A normal force, which can, can act either right or left. In tension or compression, really. And the bending moment, which of course is counterclockwise or clockwise. So that's pretty much it. The last thing we need to learn are the conventions for the directions of these loadings. So the first convention is that positive shear makes the beam spin clockwise. So looking at our example here, if we found out that V was equal to 5 newtons or something, we would report this as a positive 5 for that shear force V. Because this force right here wants to spin this beam in the clockwise direction. If we did all the math and the analysis and we found out that the shear force was actually this way with a magnitude of 5, we would report this as a negative 5. And also, when we made our cut, we selected the right-hand side of that cut to analyze. But in the same way, if I made a cut right here, I could just as easily I could just as easily select the left-hand side to be the one to analyze. So if I did all my math and I got my shear force B, V, that is, to be like 7 downwards, this would actually be positive shear. Because check it out, this force wants to spin this FBD in the clockwise direction. So a bit of weirdness there because over here, our shear was downwards and it was negative. But over here, the shear was downwards but it was positive. So stick to this statement here. All right, now for our normal force. So positive normal force creates tension. So over here, we learned that we needed a normal force going to the left to keep everything still. This normal force looks like it wants to stretch this beam like a rubber band. So this is tension right here. So therefore, whatever number we calculate for that normal force, we would just put a positive sign on it. If I got 10 newtons, I would put that I got positive 10 newtons of normal force. And again, don't con get confused, left doesn't mean positive normal force. Over here, this would be a positive normal force because it's creating tension. And lastly, positive bending moment makes the beam curl concave upwards. So looking at our first example here, this moment here that wants to bend our beam really is going to want to bend it like this. It's going to want to bring that left end over here downwards. So this is concave downwards. And therefore, if this moment was calculated as a 12 newton meters, I would put a negative sign on it, as this is negative bending moment. So my statics teacher told us that if it makes the beam frown, it's negative. If it makes the beam smile, it's positive. So if we calculated our bending moment to be like this, well, th that really wants to make this beam smile. It wants to bring that right-hand side upwards. So if this was a 9 newton meter moment, I would say it's a positive 9 newton meter bending moment. So these conventions are something you want to keep to. Because uh, later equations we develop in this chapter of internal loadings are all based on this convention. And just know it's not as simple as left negative, right positive. Got to stick with these statements here. All right, so we introduced internal loadings, why they're really needed 
And what they are, there's, there are these internal forces and moments created inside the metal itself. That's why it's called internal loadings. And we discussed the convention for the direction as well. In the next couple of videos, we'll get some practice calculating the, uh, the internal loadings for some beams. So, hope everything made sense. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments.